Hello, this is Morel Bernard with the continuation of the story, the life story of Booker T. Washington, an American. And last words were, the practice cottage is well kept and is an interesting picture in miniature of the essentially practical side of the school gospel of hard work with the hands as a part of a useful education. And by the way, please subscribe to the channel and please share the videos. Much appreciated. Of course, this cottage routine is not allowed to interfere with the class work. And while they are testing their ability to manage a modest, clean, attractive, livable home, the girls are pursuing the studies they have selected to fit them for their several lines of work after graduation. In addition to the training in the academic department, these girls are learning trades and what is more important, how to make homes for themselves or for others. In this cottage, the senior girls round out their course by the practical application of all the theories in household economy and what they have learned during the earlier years of their training. The course in domestic science is perhaps worth outlining in part because it is practical and is designed to make the home an uplifting agency by its daily operation and influence. First year making and care of fires, care and adjustment of lamps used for cooking, cleaning and keeping in order the tables, closet, sinks and pantries, care of material as it comes from market, washing kitchen and cooking dishes and care of baking bowls, dish towels and dish cloths, cleaning painted and unpainted woodwork washing windows, sweeping and dusting, the proper use and care of utensils, making breads without yeast, making biscuit, cornbread, sweet and white potato, graham and oatmeal bread, muffins of each of the flours and combinations of rice or grits with them, making different kinds of toast and using stale breads, cooking vegetables in simple ways, the simplest forms of cooking meats, making plain brown and milk gravies and sweet sauces, cooking cereals and serving in various ways, also cooking fish and eggs. Second year, care of silver, glass, china, brass and nickel, care of table linen, laying table for a different meals, Waiting, clearing table when washing dishes, cleaning oiled floors, lessons on providing material for meals and calculating cost, preparing given menus and estimating time required in preparation, making yeast bread, brown and white, rolls, muffins, coffee, spice and raisin bread, soup making with and without meat, purees, from beans, peas and other vegetables, with or without milk, stews, hashes, minces, cleaning and cooking chicken in various ways, bacon, boiled, fried, making tea, coffee, chocolate and cocoa. The third year deals with the theory of foods, their source, selection and composition and economic value and the practice of principles involved in different methods of preparation. The fourth and final year covers the study of dietaries, including the arrangement of bills of fare for daily living, in which the expense is limited to 50 cents for each person, and dinners of three courses for six persons. In the school laundry... The young women are taught the art of washing and ironing according to improved methods. Two washers, an extractor, a mangle, starcher, collar and cuff ironer have been added to lighten the drudgery. Drying rooms and ironing rooms provided with excellent facilities 
afford means for thorough teaching. All of the washing for teachers and students, including bed and table linen, is done in this department. The course covers one school year. It is a policy of the Institute to give special attention to the training of girls in all matters pertaining to dress, health, etiquette, physical culture and general housekeeping. The girls are constantly under the strict and watchful care of the Dean of the Women's Department and the Women Teachers. Special rules governing the conduct of the girls are made known to each girl upon her arrival. In addition to the general training, they receive special practical talks from various members of the faculty on such matters as relate to the care of the body, social purity, etc. The course in household training includes such instruction as the location and sanitation of a home, furniture, its purchase, arrangement and proper care, surroundings and their advantages, cleaning, lamps, beds, bedrooms and general weekly cleaning, the care of the dining room, serving the table and the care of linen, silver, pantry, dishes and towels, the duties and manners of the hostess, the furniture and care of the kitchen, marketing and economy, punctuality and regularity in preparation of food, the sick room, its attractions and proper ventilation, changing the patient's clothing and bedding, feeding and visiting the sick, yards and outhouses, how to keep clean and how to beautify. The housekeeper's personal appearance, dress, what to wear and the colours suitable. The hospital and training school for nurses were organised to provide for the physical needs of the Tuskegee colony and to equip young women for efficient service among their people. A beautiful two-storey hospital building with all modern improvements has been finished with enlarged facilities for the care of patients. The facilities for the training of nurses are excellent and the standard of admission high. Graduates from the hospital are doing good work, many of them holding excellent positions in the hospitals, schools and primates private infirmaries throughout the South. The five Tuskegee nurses sent to the front in the Spanish-American War were the only coloured female nurses employed by the government. The course of study covers three years, but is so arranged that students of exceptional ability are able to complete it in two Seven years ago, I became impressed with the idea that there was a wider range of industrial work for our girls. The idea grew upon me that it was unwise in a climate like ours in the South to narrow the work of our girls and confine them to indoor occupations. If one makes a close study of economic conditions in the South, we will soon be convinced that one of the weak points is the want of occupations for women. This lack of opportunity grows largely out of traditional prejudice and because of lack of skill. All through the period of slavery, the idea prevailed that women, not slaves, should do as little work as possible with their hands. There were notable exceptions, but this was the rule. Most of the work inside the homes was done by the coloured women. Such a thing as cooking, sewing and laundering, as part of a white woman's education, was not thought of in the days of slavery. Training in art, music and general literature was emphasised. When the coloured girl became free, 
She naturally craved the same education in which she had seen the white woman specialise in. I have already described our trials at the Tuskegee Institute in attempting to get our girls to feel and see that they should secure the most thorough education in everything relating to the care of a home. When we were able to free them of the idea that it was degrading to study and practice those household duties which are connected with one's life every day in the year, I felt convinced that one other step was necessary. New England and most of the middle states are largely engaged in manufacturing. The factories, therefore, naturally give employment to a large number of women. The South is not yet in any large degree manufacturing territory but is an agricultural section and will probably remain such for a long period. This fact confirmed my belief that an industrial school should not only give training in household occupations to women, but should go further in meeting their needs and in providing education for them in out-of-door industries. In making a study of this subject, it became evident that the climate of every southern state was peculiarly adapted to out-of-door work for women. A little later, I had the opportunity of going to Europe and visiting the Agriculture College for Women at Swanley, England. There, I found about 40 women from some of the best families of Great Britain. Many of these women were graduates of high schools and colleges. In the morning, I saw them in the laboratory and classroom studying botany and chemistry and mathematics as applied to agriculture and horticulture. In the afternoon, these same women were clad in suitable garments and at work in the field with a hoe or rake, planting vegetable seeds, pruning fruit trees or learning to raise poultry and bees and how to care for the dairy. After I had seen this work and had had made a close study of it, I saw all the more clearly what should be done for the coloured girls of the South where there was so large an unemployed proportion of the population. I reason that if this kind of hand training is necessary for a people who have back of them the centuries of English wealth and culture, it is tenfold more needful for a people who are in the condition of my race at the South. I came home determined to begin the training of a portion of our women at Tuskegee in the outdoor industry. Mrs. Washington who had made a careful study of the work in England, took charge of the outdoor work at Tuskegee. At first, the girls were very timid. They felt ashamed to have anyone see them at work in the garden or orchard. The young men and some of the women were inclined to ridicule those who were bold enough to lead off. Not a few became discouraged and stopped. There is nothing harder to overcome than an unreasonable prejudice against an occupation or a race. The more unreasonable it is, the harder it is to conquer. Mrs Washington made a careful study of the girls and discovered the social leaders of a certain group. With this knowledge in hand, she called the leaders together and had several conferences with them and explained in detail, just what was desired and what the plans were. These leaders decided that they would be the pioneers in the outdoor work, beginning in a very modest way with a few girls. The outdoor work has grown from year to year until it is now a recognised part of the work of a school. And the idea that this kind of labour is degrading has almost disappeared. In order to give, if possible, a more practical idea of just what is taught the girls, I give the entire course of study. 
In reading this, it should be borne in mind that the theory is not only given, but in each case the girls have the training in actual work. Since the school year opens in the fall, the work naturally begins with the industries relating to the fall and winter. The course of study is first year, full term, dairying, the home dairy is first taken up, and a detailed knowledge of the following facts taught. Kinds used in care of utensils, gravity, creaming. A study of stone, wooden and tin churns, ripening of cream, churning, working and sorting butter. Preparation and marketing of the same, feeding and care of dairy cows. Poultry raising. A working knowledge is required of the economic value of poultry on the farm. Pure and mixed breeds, plain poultry house, construction, making of yards, nest and runs. Horticulture. Instruction is given as to the importance of an orchard and small fruits. Varieties best suited, particular locality, selection and preparation of ground, setting, trimming, extermination of borers, lice, etc. Special stress be laid upon the quality and quantity of peaches, pears, apples, plums, figs, grapes and strawberries that should be planted in a home orchard. Floriculture and landscape gardening. A study of the dooryards, how to utilise and beautify them, the kinds, care and use of tools used in floriculture and landscape gardening, trimming and shaping of beds and borders, and the general care of shrubbery and flowers, the gathering and saving of seed, special treatment of rose bushes and shrubbery, market gardening, importance of proper management of a home garden, its value to the home, selection and preparation of ground, kinds, care and use of tools, planting, gardening and marketing of all vegetables, gathering of seeds, drying of pumpkins, okra and fruits, livestock, Study is limited wholly to ordinary farm animals, the number and kind needed, how, when and what to feed, characteristics and utility of the various animals. Winter term, dairying. The commercial dairy is the subject of study and emphasis is laid upon the following. Use of separators of which the school has two leading styles churns, feeding, and care of the dairy herd, breeds of dairy cattle, and their selection, butter making, packing, salting, and preparation for market. Poultry, raising, special study of breeding and feeding, when, how, and what kind of eggs, and the breed of fowls to set the period of incubation, poultry bookkeeping, saving of eggs for market and introductory or study of young chickens. In floor culture and landscaping gardening, the trimming of beds and borders, mulching, tying, wrapping and preparation of plants for the winter. Winter decorations of grounds, the decorative value of native shrubbery, a study of window plants, their value in the home, halls and public buildings, their economic value, etc. Market gardening, the selections of grounds and making of hotbeds, cold frames, planting and managing of same, the raising of winter vegetables, marketing. Spring term, dairying, milking, a study of pastures, how to destroy lice and other parasites, the care of calves, the utilisation of waste in the dairy, laboratory work. Poultry raising, a more advanced study of young poultry, brooders, sanitation of the house, runs, and of all the apparatus, egg testing, molting, and its effects upon different breeds. Horticulture, spring planting, trimming, budding, grafting, spraying, care of grape vines, the wire, and post-system of support, spring laying, 
and cuttings, floriculture and landscape gardening, renewing of beds and borders, seed sowing, special study of propagation by layers, cuttings, division of roots, bulbs, kinds and uses of fertilisers for this special season, and so on. So, all part of the curriculum. Why not join me? Join me for the next video of the story, Booker T. Washington, Working with Hands. Join me for the next video of Booker T. Washington at the Tuskegee Centre. So, until then, I'll see you real soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye.